What's up, y'all? It's Chica Sis. You love to talk TV and film with. And this is my fresh out the theater for the creator. Actually, don't mind me because I'm sitting outside of a Paw Patrol theater in my theater for the next movie I'm watching, which is Saw 10. Is right there. I'm trying to do this quickly because I'm literally in between movies. But should you go and watch The Creator starring John David Washington? Short answer, yes. Now, is this film perfect? Absolutely not. There are quite a bit of things visually that become became distracting for me and little liberties and conveniences that were taken both visually, which I feel like in reference to directorial choices as well as um, things written in the scripts <laughs> that were like, okay, this is low-key cheating. I'm hoping I don't get no copyright issues because Paw Patrol is playing loud as hell in that theater right there. <laughs> when people open the door, it um, you guys can hear it more. But once the door, once the door closes, you can hear it. Anyway, there are quite a few things, and I'm going to write a review for EricaVane.com just so that you guys can fully get my thoughts aside from just this initial reaction. Um, it was really, really interesting to me. I think that films like this are going to spark greater conversations in reference to the conversations around AI and the race that we're having to rapidly evolve it without thinking about the implications that come with it. Like how do we as humans survive moving forward, the more human-like and conscious bearing we attempt to make artificial intelligence or the machines that are utilizing artificial intelligence. And I think that the film takes us to a place that is maybe 50 years down the line, but 50 years can go really, really quickly in human existence. So I don't think that the things that we see play out in the film are too far to grasp in reference to like, oh, we don't, don't need to worry about that. We don't need to think about that right now, right? I think John David Washington provided a really beautifully nuanced performance um, as Joshua, Sergeant Joshua Taylor. Um, halfway through, I started to pick up on like what they were putting down, but I do believe that they set it up beautifully so that it became an inquisitive like thing, a quest that really ke keeps the audience's interest at the beginning. Um, but again, midway through, you do kind of start to put two and two together, and some of the things that are, I guess, meant to be little nuggets aren't necessarily nuggets because you've already figured it out before they actually reveal it. So I don't know if that's something that they could do with better pacing and how they structure certain story elements. But overall, I really, really enjoyed the film from beginning to end. Choices that Dr. I'm not talking Dr. <laughs> Sergeant Joshua Taylor makes. You completely understand them. And then also the AI, you really, really understand what is making them tick. I think there's some questionable things in reference to like um, there's a couple of moments where like a the AI elements, because I don't even know what to call them, right? Besides from like AI. They are saying they can never hurt humans all of the AI in this, and this is like basically not not really a spoiler, um, but the AI cannot harm the creator for sure, but they're fighting a war against humans in this film to be able to survive it for freedom, right? And one of the AIs confessed that like, once they win a war, they're not gonna annihilate all of the humans, they just wanna be able to be free of human oppression. And I think even that, the simile that it brings up in reference to racial oppression across this globe and things that we have seen, um, me being a part of a group of oppressed and ostracized people, I think, again, it's a very interesting conversation for the film. Um, but then putting it in machinery, it just makes it so very different. But all of the AI in the film really has highly developed, highly evolved human characteristics even feeling you get to see multiple scenes where the AI is actually grieving or crying or sad or happy um, and I think again that just opens up the conversation around what we're doing with machineries and AI in the future and it's one thing to create these computerized elements to support human life and to help us do things better easier more efficiently the more cost-effective rate but then why did we, or did you need to now make them their own versions of humans? So they, they, the AI in the film responds, or not responds, 
um, refers to themselves as their own species. Like they are a species and there's certain metaphors made in reference to Neanderthals versus the evolved human that we are today and, and different things like that. So this, I'm trying to be as no spoiler as possible. Um, but again, I think it just, this film really introduces a very in-depth um, conversation around AI that needs to be had. And I'm glad that we are having it. I'm glad that this film is here. Again, I think that there were beautiful performances, not just with John David Washington, but also like all across the board. The young child <laughs> that is their like um, weapon, the alpha, beautiful performances. Like Gemma, beautiful as much, like tit tit tens across the board when it comes to um, acting performances. I think that they did a really phenomenal job of establishing the world very early on and the stakes. Um, and the CGI for me was great. I know there are a bunch of CGI cops out there that <laughs> don't be playing no games and can spot different things, but I was fully immersed in what they gave us visually. I thought it was very, very well done. The idea of the Nomad as the weapon was like very, very intriguing. So I would say 100% you should go and see the creator. It is another film like I really enjoyed the equalizer. I didn't do a first or fresh out the theater um, review of it, but I really enjoyed the equalizer as well recently, which is at the beginning of this month. And I'm really excited about films like the equalizer and like the creator that make me feel like I'm back in the theaters again. There has been a stint of films that I've come to see at the theaters and it just feels very tropey, very basic, poor story, and it doesn't feel like cinema, but the creator does feel like cinema while also thrusting us into a conversation about the future. And I'm just like, yes, I'm here for it. If I had to give an initial rating, I would probably give it like an 8.2 out of 10. And again, that's just because of the little specific things that I will put in my written review on ericabane.com that I that I have found problems with that you might as well. That will be a spoilers review. This is a non-spoilers review. You should definitely go and see it. And then come back to this video and tell me what you thought about it. What questions came up for you? What intrigued you the most? What did you enjoy the most out of it? I was very shocked that by the end I was in tears. So it definitely elicited an emotional reaction from me that I did not expect. And again, I think that you guys should go and check it out. So, it's your good sis. You love to talk TV and film with. I'm about to go see Saw, X, 10, whatever they're calling it. And I cannot wait because I'm a, I'm a super fan of the Saw franchise. And I hope that you enjoyed this Fresh Out the Theater's Sake.